Let's wave so we can all make sure you see us. That's great. Can you hear me okay? Good. Hi, it's, I'm Deborah Prinzing. I'm so happy that we're all back together. This is our fourth week of the Slow Flowers Members Virtual Meetup. And um, I'm just delighted that you all could take the time to just pop in. Um, I apologize to my friends in Alaska when I realized I set this at 9 a.m. Pacific time. It's like 7 a.m. in Alaska. So, um, right, Missy? Yeah, oh, fine. eight. Oh, it's eight. Okay, not so bad. <laughs> Um, great. Misty, I'm so glad you're on here because we're going to do breakout uh, sessions in the second portion and um, one of them will be on on-farm sales, events, and agritourism. So would you be willing to moderate that? Great. Awesome. So let me welcome everybody to uh, our fourth meetup and give you just a little bit of a housekeeping to let you know how we're going to go uh, for the day. If you haven't been on the call in the past, uh, one thing that we like you to do is go into the Zoom chat on the right column. And if your name or business of, of your farm or florist, floral shop uh, or floral business aren't, isn't identified, if it just says iPad or I, iPhone, please uh, click on that and you get an option to rename your business. I think you have to do a, um, I think it's just a regular straight click, not a, not a, not a right click. Anyway, name your business because Nisha is going to be jotting down everybody's who's attending today and we'll put you all into the pool for drawing uh, some of our wonderful prizes that we're going to give away today. Um, okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. In the first half of today, uh, 30 minutes, we're going to have a special guest. And then in the second portion, I alluded to this a little bit, we're going to have a, um, we're going to try breakout rooms again, people. And uh, we're going to try to um, get, have four categories and we'll let you know so you can choose which category you want to be in. And Karen's going to manage that in the second half of the, of the uh, time together. And anytime you have a question, uh, jot it down in the chat. Uh, Zoom group chat and Lisa or um, Lisa Wad. Hi, Lisa. Uh, Lisa or Karen and, or I will jump in and, and uh, ask that question um, during the Q&A. So um, I'm delighted to introduce Teresa Sabankaya. Uh, Teresa owns the Bonnie Dune Garden Company in Santa Cruz, California, and uh, she was a speaker at our first Slow Flower Summit in 2017. She, many of you know, as I said in the invitation, she was, the, she's the OG Slow Flowers florist because she was, <laughs> it's just wonderful to um, have you, Teresa. And uh, I asked you to come on because there've been a lot of questions in the last few weeks about social distance, so, you know, socially distance correct flower delivery and curbside pickup and like how are people getting flowers and I, I I know you're in the midst of that so could you talk a little bit about Bonnie Dune Garden Company where you are and kind of what what your um, what your business is has been and what it is now because of the coronavirus well it's um, like every like everybody else's business it's it's undergoing changes still <laughs> um, but last we were we were sort of already um, stepping in the, into a new role um, as of last November. Um, as you know, um, we closed down our retail spot um, inside the grocery store and went back to studio. And then we were just doing um, weddings and events from the studio. And then um, we had a little pop up. Um, it was supposed to be a just infrequent pop-up at a little um, downtown Santa Cruz at a bakery um, called Buttercup Cakes. And they're a very popular bakery here in Santa Cruz. Um, they do a lot of weddings. They do like, like four to 500 weddings a year, wedding cakes and cupcakes. So I thought, um, I know the owner, we go way back. Um, I thought that'd be a great place to put some flowers, you know, flowers and cupcakes. So the, we were doing the pop-up and then um, Valentine's was, you know, Valentine's Day was really great. And then um, coronavirus hit. And um, I think she closed the bakery down right around March 11th. Um, oh, so that, then, that meant that you had to close down. Yeah. So oh, then right. Had, right. So we didn't have any place to put all of our um not only the flowers that we grow here but all of our standing orders with our local growers um i mean i have an e-commerce 
site. So we do all the local deliveries and we have a new website now, which enables us to also um, hook in with um, uh, other, you know, flower shops. So we can do nationwide designer choice, you know, connections and then ship our posies and so somewhat uh, so on and so forth, all the stuff on the website. But um, so I started, um, kind of wrote it out for a couple of weeks, you know, like the rest of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite sure um, if this was a, just going to be a little, little short bump in the road or if we were looking at something um, more significant. And as we all know, it became something much more significant. So by the end of March, towards the end of March, I realized I need to start thinking about doing something different. Mm -hmm. um, but um, all the while I was thinking, my e-commerce site started just blowing up. Um, I shipped more posies out than I've ever shipped out. Um, and I, amongst all the sadness of, you know, everything that's going on, that really lifted me my spirits up because I started seeing these messages that people were putting on their orders that they wanted to send um, with the flowers. They were things like, I'm sorry, I can't be there for you to give you a hug. You know, I miss you. This is crazy. You know, we'll get through this together. But it were, it was, it was, it went, it ran the gamut, like the occasions that people were wanting flowers. It was every, everything from, like, I just got an order today. Um, a lady, you know, lost her job and she's completely depressed. And her daughter, you know, wants me to deliver something, you know, bright and cheerful and, um, you know, just to lift her up. Um, but I felt that, like, you know, three weeks after California shut down, um, I really felt people just uh, grasping for something good. And I'm, Teresa, still can, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you describe what the Posey um, product yeah, yeah. is? And like, it, when you say shipping, is it just local or how are you? No, it's First all, Posey, a Posey is um, a language of flowers bouquet, a bouquet that tells a story. Um, I'm going to be... Uh, I have to show my book. Yes, you do. Absolutely. The Posey book. So beautiful. I know, I know a lot of you. I see, I know Misty's got it. Thank you, Misty, so much. Um, I know a lot of you already have it, but um, they are garden inspired bouquets that tell a story. So we're using the language of flowers to convey messages in the language of flowers. And the book is all about how to do that. Um, everything for, and all kinds of sentiments can be um, conveyed using the language of flowers. So um, that, that particular week that I'm talking about where the website blew up, um, I shipped more, like, as I said, I shipped a lot of posies and people are trying to convey messages with flowers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and how, how is it to ship them? I mean, you're, okay, you're, so you make it the whole thing and like package it carefully? Yeah, I make the posy and I have, it's taken me a while to, you know, perfect that, this, but um, we're using the either Echo Fresh um, to keep the stems damp or Arrive Alive, whichever you're, you know, I'm not, uh, t you know, giving a shout out to either one. They're both good products. Um, uh, and then I have devised this mechanism inside a, it's just, you know, shipping box where I'm securing the posy down into the shipping box with the with the wet wrap and securing um, the container alongside of it. The, the, the container is laying flat like this and then I'm shipping the posy kind of snuggled up next to it. Mm -hmm. And I have these bars that go across so that the weight of the container doesn't smash the flowers. And then um, that all gets filled with a um, biodegradable shipping uh, peanuts, kind of like peanuts. Um, and then um, I'm shipping overnight, obviously. Wow. And so you're actually sending it with a vase or a vessel as well as the posy. Okay. What's the average cost for that? 
Um, the shipping or the posy? The posy. Um, I sell the posies online for sixty-eight dollars. That's a credible, an incredible price, Teresa. How many yeah. stems are in that posy? Yeah, um, probably about three stems of roses. Um, if I'm using them, hydrangeas, herbs, um, mm -hmm. the titanium, dusty miller, some alstro, maybe some stock. So I'd say probably um, a total of 15 to 18 stems. Okay. Okay. Posies are usually about eight inches, six to eight inches in circumference. Mm -hmm. so I'm not shipping this huge world. Right. right. Um, but, you know, um, they've been so well received, I think. I mean, even though they're small and compact, they're very beautifully designed. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of texture, mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of beautiful, you know, coordinated colors. And if any of you guys are flower growers, um, you probably can grow a lot of the stuff that I'm calling for in some of these recipes. The book has like all these recipes in it. Um, and each posy, I'm using all the elements that would convey one sentiment, like get well, or, you know, um, a brighter day. Um, you are my sunshine, birthday wishes, all these things. So you're using all the elements that would convey those sentiments. So, um, that's incredible. That's I, I feel like you were, uh, already down the path of really perfecting this. Well, first of all, this, your brand has been associated with the posy and the language of flowers for, for over a decade. So then once you started creating the posies locally, that kind of led to people wanting you to ship them. So like you were a, ready to turn this on during the coronavirus when people can't walk into a flower shop or you can't, yeah. you know, physically hand the, the flowers to somebody, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. And, you know, I'm not just delivering posies. People are still ordering designer choices. Um, I took all of our signature styles down um, off of my website. Um, my signature styles what that means is we'll design something very, very unique to us in our design aesthetic. Um, like one of them was um, called Rosemary Rhapsody and it, you know, the vase is wrapped in rosemary. And I think you saw that one, Deborah, um, yeah. when I on Instagram, just lovely. Um, uh, I took all those down just because I can't get all that stuff right now. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when we had the shutdown, um, exactly what I feared, you know, I called our local growers and it was like, we don't know if we're going to have your gardenias. We don't know if we're going to be here. We don't know if the, we don't know what, you know, nobody knew what they were doing. So I decided let's just do it. The, keep the posies up there because I can grow a lot of the stuff that's, I already do grow a lot of the stuff that, you know, sure. I can make posies out of. Um, but I did not want to let go of my standing orders <laughs> with my growers. Um, for numerous reasons, but the, you know, the main reason is, is I want to help them stay in business and um, I want to help myself stay in business. So um, I kept my standing orders and then I got a little bit of a lull in the website and a lot of flowers in the cooler. And um, I decided to set up um, a little, flower, call, I call it Friday flowers. Um, and I put a, um, a, a post on my community's Facebook page. It's called Bonnie Dune, a slice of heaven. Mm -hmm. um, that's my community's Facebook page. And I put on there that, hey, I'm trying to support our local flower farms by keeping my standing orders in place. Therefore, I have a bunch of flowers in the cooler and I'm offering them to my community um, to come by my house and pick up. Um, not, I didn't say I'm offering them at a you know, reduced rate, but I did drop the price on some of the stems just to make it more affordable, entice more people to come and buy flowers. And that was Easter weekend. Um, I posted it on that Facebook page, I think on Tuesday. Okay. 
And I said, I'm doing this thing called Friday Flowers. I have, you know, and I, I really talked about how I wanted, I wanted people to support the local flower farms during mm -hmm. the crisis. And I got an overwhelming response. Were you having them come to your, your, into your driveway? Yeah. Okay. So yes, I set up, I literally set up one of those pop-up tents. Yep. Six foot table underneath it with a tablecloth with all my cute little, you know, flower buckets and people then mowed me. So what I said on the, on the Facebook thing was, P, you know, private message me if you would like to buy a bouquet. And it was just like, ding, 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 ding. And I was like, oh my God, it was crazy. I <laughs> go buy more flowers from Paul. <laughs> on Friday, I called Paul, my rose grower, Paha Rosa. And I said, oh, I said, Paul, I'm out of roses. And he said, well, so am I. And I'm oh like, my gosh. <laughs> so, no, you got to find something. So bless his heart. He went out himself. There were no employees there. He went out and cut roses. <laughs> oh, wow. This so, is such an encouraging story, Teresa. I know. I want, I, that's, I'm so happy that you had me here because I, I don't want to do anything but inspire people. We've got to get creative and we've got to still keep selling flowers and I think with our social media, um, share with people the power of flowers and why they need to still keep buying flowers. Don't let us go. We're your American flower farmers. When this is all over, you're going to need flowers. And you're going to need, you need flowers even more, you know, now more than ever. Right. And I hope you don't mind. But this morning, I got up really early. Um, and I've had too much coffee. Can you tell? <laughs> I love your enthusiasm. <laughs> I came up with some hashtags that I think we should, besides Slow Flowers Society and Slow Flowers and all those hashtags, but I came up with these hashtags. <gasps> oh, yes. Faith in flowers, planting hope, flora therapy, flowers make us happy, blossoms from the block. That's really cute. And flowers feed the soul. Those are wonderful. Blossoms from the block. That's what I'm going to put. I'm going to put on my little, um, you know, yeah. my my Instead of Jenny from the hood, you're going to be blossoms from the block. I love it. So neighborhood flowers, offering it to your neighbors, getting people just educated about, you know, help, you know, help us stay um, just like you're helping the restaurants and other local businesses by like buying gift cards or whatnot. Um, I, I just want to do my part. I'm, I, I can't do it single-handedly, obviously, but just making people aware that, um, we need to, we've made such great, um, we've accomplished so much yeah. you know, in the flower industry. And we're really just starting to see, you know, our American flowers blossoming again. Yeah. And um, let's not lose that momentum through this. And we got to make it easy for people to get their hands on flowers. So the Friday flowers thing worked out so well for me. I decided to do it again this week. And I'm, I'm, as soon as I get off of here, I got to hit the ground running and, and get bouquets made because people are coming to the end of my driveway. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, you better hurry up. It's 920. When are they coming? Oh, and I, <laughs> um, I know I've already been out this morning. I had to cut the lilacs because it's starting to rain. Oh, and my lilacs are almost done. Oh my gosh. And so, I to create the last few. so let me ask you a couple other questions and then maybe we'll open it up to Q and A. Is that good, Teresa? Yeah. Okay. So just so people, um, I don't know if the people join late, if they maybe heard that Teresa had a retail shop in downtown Santa Cruz up until right around Thanksgiving. She closed that and moved all her production to her studio at her property in Bonnie Doon. And you're doing, you're fulfilling, you have been fulfilling orders and doing deliveries out of that space, right? For yes. local. Mm -hmm. So now are, are you doing any local design there and del for, for local delivery? And how, if so, how are you doing handling that? Local deliveries? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still doing um, Santa Cruz local deliveries. We do about, um, on a good week, um, about eight local. Um, and then we do, like I said, we do shipping. Um, our posies get shipped nationwide. Um, so local deliveries, I mean, I just, 
um, I've got a little minivan with our logo, um, you know, wrap on it, and we get the orders off. They either call my studio number and say they want flowers delivered, or um, uh, they order off the website. Um, and then you and you're doing like, you know, contact face mask gloves, or is yeah. is Dawn doing it for you, or? Oh, Dawn, um, Dawn is, ta uh, she's taking a break okay. uh, because her partner is, um, autoimmune uh, as I am. Um, wow. so she's, she's being very, very cautious. So she decided a couple of weeks ago to just stay, um, stay put where she's at, but she's coming back on board for mother's day. Um, but as far as how I'm delivering it, um, I'm doing the, um, the mask the gloves and I'm calling the recipient, which we never did before because everyone wants to be surprised, you know, when they get their flowers, but that's, we just can't do that anymore. So I'm calling them ahead of time and just saying, you know, Hey, I've got a flower delivery for you today. But, you know, I introduced myself, of course, yeah, we're yeah. at Montague Garden Company. We're a florist in town and you, you have received, we've received an order to deliver flowers for you. And I, we're doing no contact delivery. So I'd like to leave them on the porch for you and I'll be there around, hate to sound like a cable guy, but I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anytime between one and five, I'm like, oh, so <laughs> but, um, but that's, and people are so, they're all of them are always like, oh, thank you. Like, mm -hmm. thank you for not making me go to the door and mm -hmm. there. Um, yesterday I did, did a delivery and, um, I called the lady and I said, I'm just five minutes away. And I said, I'd like to leave it on your, on your doorstep. Okay. And she said, okay, great. Oh, that's exciting. Thank you. But her husband came out, you know, so you can't, and I, you're you know, like, go I, away. <laughs> um, I don't know. Sometimes they get so excited. They forget, you know, yeah. but it was like, okay, I'm just going to leave them right here. You know, like, in other words, don't come, don't come wow. to me. Just stay there. But um, it's working out totally fine. Okay, um, Teresa, I'm so glad you're here. Our friend Lisa Wad, who's our membership manager, is on the call, and she has invited a special guest to join us today that was as a surprise to you and me and everyone else. So, Lisa, could you please introduce our special guest? We have uh, Amy Stewart with us to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> Amy! Hi! <laughs> Wow, what a treat. There she is. <laughs> what do you think of this, Teresa? I'm I'm in awe. I'm 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 starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, been watching, I've been watching Amy's videos lately too. I'm very yeah. inspired, as usual. So uh, Amy, uh, tell us just a little bit about uh, how you met Teresa and uh, what you're doing now. Well, um, Teresa and I met uh, years and years ago, I think it was 2005, um, when I was working on Flower Confidential. Um, and uh, she's the florist who I really kind of featured in the book as an example of a modern florist who works very much the way florists did, you know, 100 years ago. So looking, one of the things I wanted to do was look at the past, like, where the floral business was when it was really all American grown, right? And, and, and extremely local and extremely seasonal because we didn't have um, the technology and the transportation and all the other stuff to make it, um, make it different than that. So, um, so I felt like Teresa was someone who um, today is doing it like we did when we had no choice but to be very seasonal and very local and extremely um, regional and homegrown. I called her the OG, Amy. She's she's <laughs> she's the OG slow flowers florist. Thanks to and and thanks to you for for bringing Teresa into my life, and I can't believe you're joining us. Uh, for everybody who's listening, Amy is like a truly the groundbreaking uh, voice in bringing our attention to uh, where our flowers come from and how they're grown and who's growing them and just some of the really complicated geopolitical issues around the global floral world and. Uh, I guess now you're in Portland and yeah. you're quarantined. <laughs> Can you give us a little snapshot of your life right now? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the, I mean, the, the big joke for writers is that nothing has changed, right? I mean, <laughs> we sit at home and don't talk to people. So, uh, so, so 
I mean, really and truly, uh, an average day for me is no different from this, except normally I would go to the gym and now I'm just walking in the hills um, behind my house. So that is like the only thing that's changed. But, um, but um, I uh, still, it feels different. Like it, it just, it, it feels like this time is different. So I'm doing different things right now than maybe I would be otherwise. Like I'm just thinking about my work very differently. The future is very uncertain. So um, how I think about, you know, I'm a writer. So, you know, I'm always thinking two years ahead because the book I'm writing right now won't be out for two years. And so I'm always looking way out into the future. And now that future is a lot less certain. So I'm spending my time differently. I got interested this last year in teaching, um, but I wanted to teach online uh, rather than travel. Ironically, you know, I was trying right. to figure out. I was trying to figure out ways to travel less, and uh, that that gift was delivered to me in a way that I was not expecting. So I've been using this time to um, make a lot more online classes um, to do with writing and to do with art. Um, and I'm actually about to do one. My next one is going to be about keeping a garden journal or a nature journal, which is you know something I'm always kind of interested in and I've been doing here in Portland but I thought oh wait everybody's at home right now I should totally move this to the front burner like I don't have a garden anymore I live in a little condo but other people have gardens and there's literally nothing to do but sit and look at your garden like my conversations with my friends right now are all about things like I saw a bird do the weirdest thing the other day <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, I have a bird who's doing kind of this. And it's like, seriously, we're on the phone talking to each other about birds that we see. Because like, that's all there is to talk about. Oh, my god. So that's me right now. Yeah. Um, Amy, uh, where where can people find all of your content? Um, is everything at amystewart.com or? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, just go there. It's all there. Um, can I ask a, a question? Yes. A, a slow flowers question? Yes. So, when, when y'all were talking, I was thinking about two things. One thing I was thinking about was the flowers from the Heartland Project, you know, when gay marriage um, was, was legal at this kind of unexpected moment in San Francisco. And so people from all over the country were calling their local florist or calling florists in San Francisco and saying, could you deliver a bouquet to just anyone standing in line to get married right now because every wedding deserves flowers. And it was this super sweet moment. So I was thinking about that and then I was also thinking about this company in um, New York City that makes picnic boxes for mm. people who are gonna like have a picnic in Central Park. And so what they're doing right now is you can order a picnic box to be delivered to the hospital for healthcare workers. And they've got a, they, they're all set up to do that. And so I was wondering, is there like a, I can imagine it's sort of logistically difficult to bring anything to healthcare workers, but is there anything like that happening with flowers? like? order flowers to be delivered to healthcare workers or caregivers, or is there a thing like that in the flower world right now? I, you know, I know that it's happening on an individual basis. We have a member here in um, Seattle uh, who, ha um, Charlotte Flowers, and she has worked incredibly close with one of the hospitals to actually write protocols for flower deliveries. So oh. that um, there's an accepted process. And um, she actually has shared it with me. So um, I'm going to try to put it in my next newsletter so people can see it. But it's really complicated. Like yes. she's required to bleach out all the buckets before the flowers are delivered. And then the flowers have to be uh, quarantined for a day at the hospital oh. before they can be handed to the caregivers or the, or the um, you know, the patients. And, you know, I just think it's pretty... Um, cool the links that people are going to to try to make that happen but i don't know how it would happen nationally has anybody else heard anything about that teresa are you doing any deliveries to hospitals or no mm -hmm. uh, i i did i did just one delivery you know from an order um mm -hmm. but i have been thinking about the same thing amy um how we could put something like that together you know and make it make it like a collaborative effort, you know. Yeah. I, know I know Paul um, Paja Rosa. Uh, when we first got the shelter in place, um, of course, no one was going down and buying all the roses that he had already he already had his coolers full. Um, he did two deliveries to the the hospital in Watsonville, but I don't know um, if he's done any more. 
Yeah. I don't think there is a best practices. And so it is very much um, on a case by case yeah. basis. But I love, I love the idea that Amy's alluding to, which is if, if there could be um, just almost like a clearinghouse for donations and um, recipients, I, there's so much opportunity and um, you know, it, in my opinion, I'd be great to tap into something that's already in place, like like an Uber Eats, you know, like somebody who's already doing kind of that has that infrastructure or that platform. So we'll we'll noodle on that, Amy, and let you know. Um, I always want to do something for the healthcare workers. You know, when I'm yeah. I'm standing in line to get into my Trader Joe's, if I see there's a hospital in my neighborhood, so if I see anybody walking up to the line in scrubs, I'm always like, take my place. I'll go to the back of the line. Oh, right. Like, Anyone I see in scrubs, I'm like, what can I do for you? Can I buy you coffee? What do you need? You know? So. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Oh, it's, so, it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. Well, uh, we are so delighted that you joined us and I, Yes. Uh, love watching everything that Amy Stewart is doing, which has moved a little bit beyond floral right now. Although I love that you're going to do a, a class on how to create a garden journal. Yeah. Um, that's really wonderful. And, uh -huh. um, and what it, when is your next book, your mystery book coming or your, your novel, what do you call it? Female um, crime? <laughs> what genre yeah, my, are you in? <laughs> my, well, my next novel, um, and I'm not deliberately sitting with all my books for self-promotion. It's just because <laughs> where I can prop my, my phone can be propped up on a bookshelf. So I'm right here next to my bookshelf. But anyway, Don't apologize. <laughs> um, I am apologizing. Um, this is the next one and it was supposed to be out in September. It has now been moved to January. Oh. Um, many of us authors have had our publication dates moved and it's um, a lot of books had to be moved. And so when you move one book, you got to move another book. It's just a bunch of pieces to a puzzle. So this is a, a piece of a puzzle that got moved to um, mm -hmm. January. Mm -hmm. so, great well yeah. amy um we're gonna go back to q a with Teresa, and um I, it just brightens my whole day to see you you're welcome to stay with us and um we'll make sure we share with the group how people can find you and follow you and watch your videos and take your classes and subscribe to all the groovy stuff you're doing i'm delighted to see you yes well it was wonderful to see you guys i have to run but um i love you all and um it's wonderful to see your beautiful faces so thank you amy well. thank you bye-bye Bye. um hey we've got one more question for Teresa, and then i um i think we'll um at least one more question lisa do you want to jump in yes uh i have a question for Teresa from laura um, we're, we're just wondering how you price your pop-up Friday flowers. Um, starting, I'm doing mixed um, bouquets starting at 35. So mixed, um, mixed bouquets starting at 35. I'm just trying to keep it really simple for people that, um, and I, I don't have to really think about it. 35 is a good price starting point for me. Um, I could, and, and I intend to, as my garden starts to come in more of the, what I call my copious, you know, the production area where I will have a lot of one thing, then I will do grower bunches. If this continues to be as successful as it has been for me, um, I'll, I'll do grower bunches too. Um, and, but that'll be like a straight variety, like, like yeah. just or you know as the rose I've got you know my garden roses are coming but I've got a lot of um, budding going on so I'm anticipating I'll be able to bunch up some garden roses and um, I put in a lot of dahlias this year which I don't usually do because we've got um, we're inundated with as is you know with an incredible amount of dahlia growers here um, Coralitas Gardens, which um, produce just thousands and thousands of stems um, every year. They're just like 20 miles from me. But um, I got sucked into one of those emails that came across. Oh, look at all these new. <laughs> Before I knew it, I had, you know, 650 Dahlia tubers on the way. <gasps> oh, my well, gosh. You guys all know how that is. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> Misty's laughing. Yeah. And um, I did also a bunch of peonies. Now peonies for us, I mean, I'm just, I'm only at 2000 feet elevation. So we don't get um, a whole lot of the cold, but we do just enough for me to produce a decent 
peony. It's not like the peonies that Misty can grow up in Alaska or Lisa in Michigan. I remember mm -hmm. when I lived in Michigan, we used to just mow them down with the, they're just hedges, hedges of peonies. But um, anyway, we'll do back to the $35 price point. I mean, I was going to do 25, but um, $35 is, is a good, um, it's just, a, it's just a happy point for me. I feel like I make a little bit of money on the bouquet and it enables me to obtain the aesthetic that I like to put out there. I also feel like it's, um, 35 is a designer price point that is above what you'd pay at the farmer's market. And I think that you're not selling farmer's market, um, you know, kind of. No, no, they're wrapped gathered. and ready to go. Yeah. I'm sorry, I cut you off. You said you wrap them? Yeah, they're wrapped really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people are picking them up on the way to, they're going to drop them off at, you know, someone's house or, or whatever. And so the presentation is already there. You know, it's mm -hmm. ready to go. It's just a good great. Thing. I think that um, there's just a couple more questions. To, uh, Lisa's going to jump in and offer, and then we're going to move to breakout rooms. Thanks to everybody for hanging in there. We, what a great morning. Mm -hmm. um, so Teresa, um, Susan is wondering about payment. Is that handled on, the, on directly on your e-commerce site? And um, from Karen, we have wondering if you'll be folding in some of these, um, some of these new practices, even after shelter in place is, <clears throat> excuse me, after shelter in place is over, if you think that some of these things you're doing now that you'll continue to do. Okay, well, I'll answer that one first. Yes, um, now that I'm based out of my studio, um, it's easy for me to throw a bouquet together and walk down the end of my driveway on yeah. Friday. It's really it's the five, the five step bouquet. <laughs> So, and um, I love it, and I think people like it, um, that they can drive, you know, drive by and grab a bouquet. I do not do any payments. They, they all have to be prepaid, so I'll answer that question. People are, um, I am asking people to Venmo me the money, um, but about three days ago, I decided, okay, I'm going to do Friday Flowers again this week since it was so successful at Easter. And I decided to put that um, on, the, on my website. So now people can go to my website and it's called a European Hand Tide for pickup only because those start at $35. I don't want to be delivering $35 bouquets. Right, right. So, um, those are available for pickup only. So I got my first order last night for that. And the woman lives in Santa Cruz. And I had just really intended that option to be available to my community up here in Bonnie Doom. But there's no way in my website to kind of filter that out. <laughs> so, so if they want to drive up to Bonnie Doom, I guess they're going to. I was like, gosh, is she really going to drive up to Bonnie Doom to pick up a $35 bouquet? And yes. she sent me an email and she said, for your bouquet, I'm driving to Bonnie Doon and I'll be there at two. And I said, okay. That's wonderful. So, yeah. If, if I can get, you know, um, if, if it's going to, if it works, why fix it? Yeah. I think we're all, we're all seeing that maybe um, this in sort of enforced pause in business as usual has, as, as Amy alluded to, and you've alluded to, it's kind of in, stimulated this creativity that we had not had the space to think about or to explore. And it's really exciting to see how innovative people are, are uh, the innovative ways people are approaching their businesses kind of as a must do, but now it's becoming like, Hey, this is, this is easier, or this is more, you know, more direct or whatever it is. So thank you, Teresa. Um, would you hold up your book one more time? Teresa is happen to have it right here. Teresa is going to um, ha ha do a giveaway in our uh, in our regular uh, giveaway for the meetup. Uh, one of the giveaways will be her book, and she'll sign it and send it to uh, wh whoever wins it in the uh, in the drawing. And um, we'll do that drawing probably over the weekend. <laughs> and. We have a few other giveaways, but I just want to talk about one because Teresa will crack up. I, you know, I've mentioned in the past weeks that as I've been pulling 
I hate to use the word swag, but goodies together for the giveaway. I've been going through boxes of stuff from the Slow Flowers Summit, and I found the British version of Flower Confidential, <laughs> which Amy gave me. It, it, in, when it was produced in the UK, it was called Gilding the Lily. And so really, it's the same book, except for I think color is spelled O-U-R. But um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add that to one of the giveaways. Uh, so we've got, Teresa's going to be in that book and in her book. So um, it's a real delight to, to hear from you this week, Teresa. And I hope that um, the Posey uh, business just continues to, you know, really, it, it, it's a defining aesthetic for your brand and it's really helping people. And I have to say, when you talked about, I think on the podcast last summer about the fortitude Posey, I feel like the timing is better than ever for people to send that message. Yes. yes, absolutely. And I, I thank you so much for having me and, um, you know, you are literally my faith in flowers, this whole society, all of you guys. And um, I wish all of you the best of luck and, and just keep pushing the power of flowers. Use those hashtags. We can do this. Yeah, we'll, we'll circulate those. Thank you for sharing that, Teresa. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're going to let Teresa go make those bouquets for the people at the bottom of her driveway. <laughs> and... Um, and don't, lo don't leave everybody because we're going to actually uh, do our breakout sessions now. And Karen, do you want to jump in and, and just tell people what their options are? Um, next week, is everybody back in, Karen? Yes. Okay, great. All right. Um, a couple little notes that are, I'm getting in my, um, in my uh, chat box before I do a few wrap-up announcements. Lisa, Lisa, can you just jump in and say what you need me to talk about? Um, just before we got pulled out of the social media breakout room, um, there was discussion about the badges, the slow flower badges. And could you explain the difference between um, the directory that most of us are listed on and slow flower society? Please. Oh, okay, great. Well, first of all, Nisha, thank you for running the social media room. I, I didn't get to pop in, but the, are you talking about the badges that we recently post shared for everybody to use in this time of the COVID era? Like the, the badges that say together we're, you know, together we're flourishing. I think that would be flourishing. helpful. It, it may be um, all the badges that are offered for social Okay, powers. great. Mm -hmm. If you, if you, um, if you're interested in getting all the badges that are available uh, for Slow Flowers, they are available on the slowflowers.com website under press. So if you click the press page, you'll see a link to download. And I will put that link in the chat room right now, in the chat box right now. The um, slowflowers.com is what I started uh, when I didn't have a big plan. I just uh, wrote this little book. And then I started the podcast. And then all of a sudden I'd like, maybe we should start a directory so people can find farmers and florists who are sourcing local flowers. So that became slowflowers.com. And it, it, it really morphed into something larger with every time I added a new content channel. So all of a sudden I had five websites and I thought maybe I should be a little more organized. And I created Slow Flowers Society as the umbrella for all of our channels. So when you join Slow Flowers as a member, you're basically joining Slow Flower Society. Um, one of the benefits is being listed on the slowflowers.com directory. So uh, hopefully that's helpful. Um, the, um, and I will, I will, I mean, I'm wondering if you guys can just wait a second, I'll pull that link up. So what I wanted to just mention is about next week is uh, our special guest is, um, I'm really excited about, her name is Julie Toby. And Julie is, um, a coach, a business coach for creatives. She's actually Susan McCleary's uh, coach. And um, she has agreed to come on and talk about, uh, I'm putting that link in right now. I can't do two things at once, sorry. Uh, Julie is gonna come in, uh, come and share with us uh, some uh, inspiration on finding balance and wellness and really nurturing your creative spirit during a time when we're all feeling so uncertain. Uh, she spoke at Flowerstock last year and I met her there and I found her to be just a really inventive thinker and willing to, um, 
you know, be very vulnerable and open about her own story. And so she's going to um, just give us some tips that we can take with us and as we are making some big decisions about our creative lives. And as I said, Susan McCleary uh, works with her and Sue is the person who I think introduced Julie to the floral community and um, wholeheartedly endorses her. Do you know her too, Lisa? Or have you worked with Julie at all? Okay. All right. So she's going to be our special guest and we will probably try to cut that off exactly at a half an hour so we can allow at least 20 to 25 minutes for the breakouts. So everybody's so positive about that. And Missy, we'll figure out if we can get people to pre-select. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Um, okay. Last week, we had three giveaways and uh, those have been announced on the My, at My Still Flowers on Instagram, but I'll just say congratulations to Alex Fogel of Fogel Farm. She won a set of the books, The 50 Mob OK and Slow Flowers. Um, Susan Schultz from Joy to Floor Floral Design won the Slow Flowers Society t-shirt. And Ellen, uh, I'm going to say your last name wrong, Ellen. I don't know if you're on here, but Ellen K Design and the Flower Stand won a starter set of the Eco Fresh Bouquet Wraps and Tote. So this week we have the Posey book, which I'm very excited about. That's a bonus uh, by, Ter by Teresa Savankaya. So that's the first giveaway. The second is um, I have another set of the Holly Chapel pillows. I have, I think there's four of these for uh, these mechanics. So those will get shoved in a box and sent to somebody. These are the foam free design mechanics. I love this one, it's massive. And then, um, so we have four giveaways and then we have a Slow Flower Society t-shirt. I'm down to mediums. So hopefully this is a, this is a medium. Hopefully it will fit most bodies. And then I have run out of the 50 mile bouquet. So somebody's going to get Slow Flowers, Slow Flowers and Amy's book, Gilding the Lily. So that's a cool set. So Nisha will do a, a, the random drawing from the folks who are in the Zoom chat. And we'll share the video early next week and um, also remind you about our special guest, Julie, who's going to join us next week. And uh, I really appreciate you all joining. If you have any feedback, please reach out to me uh, at deborahprinzing at gmail.com and um, give me your feedback and suggestions or ideas for speakers. I've got uh, somebody else I think lined up for the following week who's gonna talk about wholesale uh, and kind of the import versus domestic challenges. Um, but we're going to keep going. When we first started the Zoom call, I thought, oh, we'll do this till the end of April and then everything will be back to normal. Well, right? <laughs> it's not. And uh, that's okay. I love you all and I thank you all for joining. And uh, we've got some really great um, uh, comments in the Zoom group chat and we're going to try to capture that, those two and share them uh, in, in the, uh, with a link next week uh, when we send out the video. Have a great weekend, everybody. <laughs>